All right, I wanted to start looking at some applications of vectors that go a little bit deeper. Um, obviously, we're not going to be able to do very much with this this year, but uh, just to give you kind of a, an idea about why this is so useful. Um, so at the end of section 8.1, there are a couple of problems that have, instead of vectors that are just going in opposite directions, uh, they have vectors that are kind of going off in opposing directions. Maybe they're perpendicular, that kind of thing. Uh, so a classic kind of problem that you'll see are problems where you have some kind of motion happening in one direction, some other motion happening in, in some other direction. Uh, for example, uh, the river problems. You'll see this with air currents or maybe water currents. Maybe you have a river that is flowing to the east. Uh, let's say it's flowing to the east at uh, three miles per hour, okay? And you're trying to row a boat straight across the river, okay? You are trying to row the boat across the river, or maybe you have a, a motor boat. You're trying to go at, um, let's say, six miles per hour, okay? And you're trying to go perfectly north, okay? What's gonna happen here is the water is moving that way, okay? So even though you're trying to go straight, the water is going to be carrying you to the side as you go straight. And so in the end, the water is going to kind of affect your velocity as well, and it's going to be taking it kind of off in this direction. And vectors allow us to see what your new direction is going to be and also what your new velocity is going to be, okay? And, and we can kind of put those things together into a new vector. So just like if I was going, you know, let's say the river went at three miles per hour and I was rowing at two miles per hour. Uh, we can add those two vectors together and you just see that you're going five miles per hour to the east, okay? Um, that implies that we can just add vectors and the resultant vector, the sum of those two vectors is going to be the overall uh, new vector of our velocity. So that's what we're gonna do too, uh, here too. We're gonna add these two vectors together. And this can be done visually or it can be done with coordinates, okay? I'm gonna do it visually uh, in, in this example. Um, all right, so remember that when you add vectors, you add vectors head to tail. So if I've got this vector and I've got this vector, uh, if I want to add those together, you, you draw your first vector and you pick up your other vector and you put them head to tail, and the sum of those two vectors is the vector that goes from the tail of the first vector to the head of the new one, okay? So that would be the sum of those two vectors visually, okay? Um, and of course, if you're plotting on a coordinate plane, you could maybe find, find out what those coordinates were. Um, you're, you know, you're going back a certain amount in the x, uh, and then you're going up a certain amount in the y from that position right there, okay? So same kind of thing here. We want to add these two vectors together, okay? We've got these velocities going in two different directions that are combining together somehow to create a new result. So remember, you can pick a vector up and you can move them anywhere you want to. Okay, so I guess actually this six mile per hour vector we might make a little bit longer because uh, it's a little bit bigger. Um, so something like that. So if I want to add those two vectors, uh, what we're really going to do is add them head to tail. And, and by the way, adding vectors is commutative. You're going to get the same answer, either one being first, either one being second. So I'm going to take my first vector, there it is, and I'm going to add the second vector, head to tail. Okay, so I've got that three mile per hour vector there, okay? So we've got a six here, uh, we've got a three here, okay? Just like my previous picture, the resultant vector is going to be the vector that goes from the tail of one to the head of the other, okay? And if you think about it, if you were trying to go straight across the river, but the river's flowing that way, the current is gonna carry you along that pathway. So hopefully that kind of makes sense just thinking about what's taking place, okay? Here's where this ties in with what we've been doing. All right, triangle. This is a Pythagorean theorem problem, okay? Uh, now, it's not always going to be, if, if the two vectors aren't perpendicular, it's not necessarily, not necessarily going to be a Pythagorean theorem, but in this case, it is. So anyway, uh, in this case, three squared is nine, six squared is uh, 36, so that's gonna be the square root of 45, okay? That's the magnitude of that vector. And uh, in some of these problems, you, you might round, but we'll just say the magnitude is, is radical 45. Um, if you wondered, um, Radical 45 is about 6.7, okay? Which, by the way, if these vectors were in the same direction, you'd expect to be going nine miles per hour if you added these together. Um, notice the resultant vector uh, 
about 6.7 miles per hour. It's a little bigger than this. So the current going this way is making it move just a little bit faster, but we're not getting the full force of that three miles per hour because a lot of that velocity is going in that direction. Um, and that's kind of affecting things. So anyway, you'll get something that's a little bit bigger than the two, but maybe not the sum of the two. That's, that's typically the kind of thing. Okay, now a vector has a magnitude and a direction. So we know the magnitude is, is about 6.7 miles per hour, okay? The direction, okay? Uh, this is a, a little trig problem. We've got a right triangle here. I can find this angle measure right here, okay? Um, and um, for example, we've got an opposite side and an adjacent side. Um, that's a tangent. So we know that tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. That's three over six, which is one half. Uh, remember, we can take an inverse tangent here. Make sure your calculator is set in degree mode, uh, but we can do an inverse tangent of one-half, and that's going to tell me that, uh, so inverse tangent of one-half is going to be approximately 26.57 degrees. Okay, so that's about a 26.57 degree angle. Okay, typically when you describe your direction, you're going to do two things. Either you're doing kind of a standard position kind of thing, and you're saying, this is a zero degree angle, how many degrees am I rotating? If that's the case, I don't want this 26. I want the angle down here. I want to know if that's zero, zero degrees would be east, what's that angle there? So I could subtract that answer from 90. Uh, and we could say that that's about a 63.43 degree angle, okay? Um, now, there are a couple ways you could say this. You could kind of be thinking like, you know, zero degrees to 360 degrees. And you could say, okay, the magnitude is about 6.7 miles per hour uh, at 63.43 degrees. This is a north-south kind of problem. Um, so a lot of times in these problems, we'll talk about like northeast, northwest, southeast, southwest, that kind of thing. Northeast, if you break that down, it's the number of degrees north of east, okay? Here's east. How many degrees north of east am I? They want this angle here. They want that lower angle. So we could say it's 63.43 degrees northeast, okay? Not every problem is going to be north, south, east, and west, but I think in this particular problem, that probably makes sense. So again, in this case, we want this. Now, if you were moving this direction, you would want northwest. That would be degrees north of west. So you'd basically want this angle right here. If you notice, those are both reference angles, okay? And the same thing will work for southeast and southwest. Find the reference angle value, and it should be that amount, southeast, southwest, south of east, south of west, okay? So anyway, this only works if you have two different things that are going perpendicular to each other. But you'll see this with, you know, air currents and a plane flying in the air at different velocities. You'll see water current problems. Uh, you can also see this with forces. If people are applying forces in perpendicular directions, you can find the magnitude of the overall force as well. So a little bit of an introduction there uh, to the idea of using right triangles to do these problems. Um, but that's what's going on.